So the three of us are just talking, where can we find information? Oh, we can't find radiation data anywhere. And it's not because it's not being published, it's because it doesn't exist. Nobody was paying attention to this stuff. And so that's when we decided that we could start pooling our resources to get equipment, get equipment in people's hands and go collect some of this data and publish it so that there would at least be something available. Within a week, we had 20, 25 people all in this Skype chat room brainstorming and trying to figure out a solution to this problem. We're looking online and we couldn't get any Geiger counters. Literally within 24 hours, the whole world supply was uh, sold out. When we realized that we couldn't get the equipment, we decided that the only way to get this done is let's go and build it ourselves. So we came up with the idea that if we put a Geiger counter on a car and we drive around with it, we can collect radiation and put it on the map. Only problem was is we didn't have the equipment, we didn't have the system. So solution was go to Tokyo Hackerspace where there's lots of people that knew how to put things together. And on the sixth day after we had the idea, we had a working system. The next day we were off to Fukushima doing our first measurements. As we started taking measurements, we saw that a reading can change like 100% just by crossing a street. And that's when we realized that it was really important for us to take very granular street by street readings every five seconds and publish really granular data so that people can drill all the way down and see exactly what the reading is right in front of their house, not an average of the entire city. After a couple of months, we realized that it would be much better for volunteers to have something that would be very concise and compact. As we redeveloped the whole system and we were able to use Arduinos and open hardware to fit it into a bento box. And that's how we came up with the bento Geiger system. Once we built one, we taught other people to build many more of them. And that really allowed us to scale up dramatically. Well, this is a disaster. This is a tremendous opportunity to take this tons of data that's being collected and try to understand what the effects on people is. That can only happen if we share the data and we put the medical data together with the radiation data. And right now the key to combining data is to make it open. And so one of the really important features of the SafeCast project is we're using a CC0 public domain dedication for all of the data so that we can try to get people to do data science on it. We found out from Fukushima that the experts really weren't very helpful and in fact that citizen science actually works. We were able to collect more data than all the projects in history and a lot of scientists came together and by pulling through the network we were able to become the best in the world. So I think what SafeCast proves is that all the preparation in the world, all the money in the world still fails if you don't have a rapid, agile, resilient system. Because of the internet, because of our agility, because of our openness, within weeks we had the world's experts together to do this, and within a year we're the biggest project that has ever existed in this kind of monitoring. And I think it really shows that with the right people and the right resources and agility, you can beat the pants off of any government pre-planning or institutional system.